Welcome to Goldfish on Games, where do you have what it takes to be a pinball wizard? The lights, the sound, the LCD animations, it all comes together to make for an amazing experience. To me, it's one of the purest forms of gaming. But I've never really been lucky enough to live anywhere that I've had easy access to them. So whenever I have found one out in the wild, I've had to have a game. This is why I've always been a fan of computer pinball, as it's been my main way of getting my flipper fix. So today I want to talk about Pinball Fantasies Deluxe for MS-DOS, which came in this very flash box with gold printing for the name. And as you can imagine, this looks quite different from the original releases. Inside we get a CD as well as a hefty manual that goes into a surprising amount of detail on each of the tables. Though the more eagle-eyed of you out there will have noticed that this has 8 tables rather than the original 4, as it has all the 4 tables from Pinball Fantasies, which was made by Digital Illusions who tend to go by the name DICE these days, and was released in 1992. But on top of that it has 4 extra tables that actually formed Pinball Mania, which was made by Spidersoft and released in 1995. I'm not entirely sure why these two games were bundled together to make this deluxe edition, but to add to the strangeness, this was released in 1996, which was a whole year after DICE released Pinball Illusions. And to play this, we're going to use the McIntyre 486, and the game pretty much runs straight from the CD. It just creates a folder to save the sound settings, as well as your precious high scores. Now, as we can see, the launch interface, well, it's a little basic, but I guess it's better than a text menu but falls a little short of the more interesting in-game menus that we'll see in a minute. But it does at least give us the options to play Fantasies, Mania, or change the sound settings, or just quit out completely. So let's jump into Fantasies first, being the early of the two games in the pack. And here we have a far more interesting menu, if a little impractical. But let's check out each table in turn, and see what they're like. And first up is Partyland. And to be honest, I think this is the best of the bunch. Which they must have also thought the same thing, seeing it was the basis of the box art for most editions. There are some nice skill shots that you can go for when you launch, which will increase each time you hit it. There's also a few ramps and loops to go for, but you may need to unlock some of the targets to really rack up the points. The side exits are a little easy to hit, which is annoying, but overall it's a fun table. One of the updates to Fantasies over the earlier Dreams was the addition of the Matcher at the end of the game, as it will randomly pick two numbers and if they match, you get another ball! The second table is I feel the worst of the lot, Speed Devils. It feels quite empty, and with no skill shots at the start it's a low scoring table. With only a few ramps and targets there's not much for you to go for, and it feels like it keeps you at the lower end of the table. But it does help show off the really well done mod player they wrote for the game, as it sounds just as good as the Amiga version, with the same audio separations. In a way it's a pity that most games would go with a redone MIDI soundtrack, where with a bit of CPU power they could have used the Sound Blaster's hardware to play mods. The third table is Billion Dollar Game Show, and yep, you can score a billion via the bonus system. Not that I've ever managed to get it. It's a nice and twisty table with lots of ramps and splitters, so you really need to keep your eye on the ball. It's easily one of the more fun tables, even with the grinning man at the bottom. And the match for this level is great, both in its countdown and when you win and gain an extra ball. 
And it's one of those tables that you're really going to have to master the upper level flipper if you really want to get those points. And the final table is Stones and Bones, a horror themed level with some nicely hidden items as well as a single set of letters that are spread across the lower table. There's also this cool ramp that has two channels running through it, so the ball weaves its way down it. It also turns out to be the only table that has a kickback that you can activate. The kickback is a get out of jail free card if you happen to fall down the left hand gutter with it activated. It will launch it back up onto the table. There's some very colourful graphics that really show off the power of VGA. And don't forget the fact that you've got the nudge, as it will come in handy. But don't overuse it all. Damn it, tilt. And with the new dot matrix style LED screen at the bottom, it really does look so much better than Dreams. And they really did create some really cool animations for some of the bonuses. And with the fantasy done, let's move on to Mania, which has a menu layout similar to the game selection, but at least it's animated and has some music. And let's start off with the first table, Tarantula, one that is based, surprise surprise, on spiders. Overall, the table has far more animations than we've seen so far. Buttons move, bumpers flash, there's even two sets of spinners. There is also an entire upper section that you have to open before you can get access to it, which requires you hitting the terror letters. These thankfully don't reset between balls, but it will close after 90 seconds, so make sure you get in there as that is where most of your points are going to come from, but it also includes the fabled multi-ball, though I've never managed to get it myself. But for all the new stuff, there is a few downgrades. There is no match system at the end, so there's no chance of getting a random extra ball. Next up is Jailbreak, a table where you get to decide if people are innocent or guilty, where you can call the guards to end riots, and all to a heavy guitar soundtrack. It might seem like a simpler table, but with lots of fun LED animations and lots of targets for you to hit, it's going to keep you interested. And the process of trying to get someone into jail is quite long, and you're going to want to do that if you want to go for the higher scores. You also got to be careful of those mid-table flippers, as not only do they tend to get in the way of you launching the ball up the table, but they also use the opposite button that you'd expect to use them. And third is Kickoff. It's by far the least interesting table in the entire collection. And that isn't just my indifference to football coming through, it has one of the shortest set of descriptions and bonuses in the manual, and it's just boring to look at and play. One thing I have noticed about the Mania tables is how the input and actions always seem to feel lagged behind what's going on on the screen. It's possible that the engine is barely keeping up with all the extras that they have added to it, but it never feels as smooth as when you're playing fantasies.
The final table in Mania, as well as the whole collection, is Jackpot, a casino based table with a lot going on. You can play a game of high and low, or you can go for the reels if you want to really rack up some score. But where the real money is in roulette, where you get to pick which colour you're going for by hitting one of the ramps. I'm not sure about some of the sound effects, but overall it's a pretty decent table. And before we go, let's check out some of the options, as there's a few interesting ones. There's the usual ones like being able to change the number of balls that you start with from 3 to 5, but you can also change it from colour to black and white, if you want. There's also the option of a high res mode, which I have to admit I usually leave off, because even on a CRT it ends up looking a bit weird. But the other option that's quite interesting to check out is being able to set the angle of the table. Now this isn't represented in how it looks, it just affects the physics. So if it's at a lower angle, the ball will move down the table much slower and get launched up much faster. And if it's at a really steep angle, it'll come down the table much faster and need far more energy to send it up. Thankfully the game selects the middle setting as its default. Well I feel it's time to wrap up because I want to try and beat my high scores. So until next time, I've been the Goldfish, that was flipping good fun, and this was Goldfish on Games. Goodbye. Thank you for watching my video. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, please consider trying to hit the like, subscribe, share, bell, all those buttons that will help me unlock the ultimate jackpot.